Hey guys, this is Agent Lozen. Today, I'm bringing you the winning tips and tricks to Super Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. If you want to raise your high score, beat your friends, or take your game to the next level, then you've come to the right place. Every hundred years, the balance of good and evil becomes disrupted, and Dracula is resurrected. Who are you going to call when you have a dangerous vampire infestation on your hands? In Transylvania, they die of the Belmont clan. In Super Castlevania 4, you play as Simon Belmont. Traverse the countryside and hunt down monsters, ghosts, and demons as you fight your way to the evil count himself. Are you ready for a showdown in the Wicked Demon Castle? In Super Castlevania 4, candles are just begging to be broken open. These candles have been bad. Very bad. Only Simon's whip can give them their proper punishment. Press Y to crack your whip and destroy candles. They're practically begging for it. This lone candle above Simon is sad that it's out of reach to be broken like its friends. Don't despair, little candle. Simon can walk upstairs by holding up while standing at the bottom stair. Staircases that are attached to the edge of a block like this one can be descended by walking directly at them. You'll need to push down if the stair is ever in the middle of a platform. You can't proceed any further in this game without mastering the jump skill first. Press B to make Simon jump into the air. Furthermore, if you hold left or right, you can make him jump in those directions. Use this trick to get across the fatal demon moat. Oh great, a steel cage is all we needed. I'm reminded of how Undertaker threw mankind off Hell in the Cell in 1998 onto the Spanish announcer's table 16 feet below. On that topic, demons, like this skeleton, hate being on the business end of Simon's whip. They hate it even more if Simon has found whip upgrades instead of candles. One upgrade transforms your whip into a morning star that does 50% more damage. The second upgrade greatly lengthens it. Press up to pass through this gate and avoid the pit in front of Simon. There aren't many gates like this in this game, but it's worth talking about for this area. Look for a chicken leg in the candle on the other side of this gate. A chicken leg will partially heal injuries that Simon has incurred. Keep an eye on the red bar at the top of the screen to stay in the loop on Simon's remaining health. I still haven't figured out how to reach this high up candle. I'll update the video when I figure- Oh! What just happened? It looks like if you hold a direction on the D-pad, you can whip in that direction too. The game design makes more sense now. By now, you've probably been holding a knife for a while. You can throw it by pressing R on the top of the controller. Every time you throw a sub-weapon, like the knife, it'll consume a heart from your stockpile. Simon can find other sub-weapons to replace the knife. The cross does more damage and returns to Simon when you throw it. And the axe can be thrown in an arc above his head. Whenever you find a new sub-weapon, it'll replace the one you're currently holding. Some goofy monster decided to hide a large pork chop in the wall here. Break the wall with your whip to free the pork chop. It seems gross to eat a wall pork chop, but eventually you acquire a taste for it. Like coffee. Eating it restores a significant part of Simon's energy. Like coffee. The jury's still out on whether pork chops are coffee. Simon walks with a slow gait, so these rings really take him out of his comfort zone. He can whip the ring and swing from it to cross pits or reach higher places. While clinging to a ring, press the direction of your momentum on the direction pad to swing more enthusiastically. Simon can raise or lower himself by pressing up or down, depending on what the situation calls for. Here's a good example of the stair mechanic we talked about earlier. You have to press down to descend these stairs, because they appear in the middle of a platform. But the stairs that attach to the end of the platform can be used just by walking straight at them. When you're comfortable with stairs, try these advanced tricks. Hold down and press B to spontaneously drop off of them. Leap towards stairs while holding up to attach yourself to them. The true masters of Super Castlevania 4 have spent many nights perfecting these maneuvers. The Holy Water is another sub-weapon at Simon's disposal. Throwing a bottle at an enemy's feet gives him an awful burning sensation. The Holy Water has huge damage potential, but it lacks the flexibility of the cross. Don't get too attached to any particular sub-weapon. 
The candles in Super Castlevania 4 are placed maliciously to steal away your most cherished sub-weapons with crappy knives. Before Simon can leave the stables, he has to defeat Rodane, an undead horse and rider. The horse is easily beaten by whipping its head and avoiding its fireballs. When Rodane is on foot, he's vulnerable to the cross if you still have it from earlier. The most important part of the fight happens after Rodane is defeated. Arrange Simon into an exciting pose just when he collects the orb. You have to rely on your emotions to get a truly inspiring pose, not just your intellect. Simon takes a detour through a spooky cemetery instead of staying on the road like a sensible person. It's no surprise then when zombie hands are grabbing at your ankles. You can break their firm grip by tapping buttons on the controller. There are also camouflaged plant men and spiders to deal with. Plant men are big targets that are easy to whip. Hold down Y to let your whip go flaccid and wiggle it around with the directional pad to knock the baby spiders out of the air. Stage 2 is also home to birds and little frogs. Their small size makes them hard to hit, but the flaccid whip knows that size isn't everything. Before you ask, no, the flaccid whip doesn't make for a flattering orb pose. Look for a double item to multiply the number of weapons you can use. According to old Italian texts, doubles will appear when you destroy a lot of candles with your sub-weapons, but only if you are holding at least 10 hearts at one point. You can double up on any sub-weapon except for the stopwatch. It's even possible to get a triple if Simon continues to destroy candles with his sub-weapon. Monster hunting is hungry work. Refill your energy with this helpful wall roast. Try using triple crosses against the Medusa fight to make quick work of her. Watch for flying enemies as Simon carefully wades through the stream. The claw, a severed hand, has a firm grip that'll drain hearts from Simon. The most dangerous part of this stream are Dracula's evil snack food. These bugles are real fingernails from actual witches. If Simon steps on them or jumps on them, it's instant death. Dracula would line the entire route to his castle with them if only he could just stop eating them. Look for a secret power-up stash here to give Simon an edge in the caves. Strike through this wall to find a host of hearts, sub-weapons, and a pork chop. There are two other hidden alcoves like this one for you to discover later in the game. The fuzz busters are the most dangerous part of this wet and wild vertical climb. If he's hit by one, Simon will usually fall to his death. They're nearly impossible to destroy, so carefully time your jumps to avoid them. This level just keeps going and going. These fishmen picked a bad time to rise out of the ocean and invade the world of air and land. While they're walking, they're not that dangerous, but it's a different story when they're in their element. The less time Simon spends around them, the better. These white bone dragons are difficult to fight head-on. Wait for them to align themselves with you before you attack. Use Simon's directional whip techniques when you're fighting them from an off angle. Don't miss this chicken leg. It's crucial that Simon gets his daily requirement of vitamins and nutrients. The mama and daddy dragon boss is mad at you for killing their bone babies. The axe and cross sub-weapons work well in this fight, otherwise you're forced to whip them from a lower angle. Simon has encountered spinning platforms earlier in his journey, but they're back now and much more dangerous. The safest way to cross them is to tap the jump button repeatedly, but sometimes they're just unfair and you die anyway. 
In life, this boss was a dude who was mocked for having a big head and a tongue. It was only in death that he found his place in the world. Hitting this boss will cause rubble to rain on top of Simon. Strike with your whip, but hold the attack button and up after every blow to let the flaccid whip protect you from the rubble. If Big Skull places himself above you, then whip as fast as you can to damage him and break the rubble simultaneously. Don't let yourself get bored while you cling to your whip and wait for this room to rotate. That's my advice. Watch out for Medusa heads too, I guess. The urgency in this spinning room isn't as real as you think it is. Expect a skeleton to be waiting for you after every jump. Remember to hold right as you cross these rising platforms. The people who let go are the ones who give this game bad reviews. The boss of this twisted, rotating stage is Coronet, a shrinking golem that paces back and forth until you make him stop. I know, that sounds like a Pokédex entry for an uninspired Pokémon. Simon is safe from Coronet's pacing as long as he stands underneath the left platform. Dodge the falling debris while you whip or throw sub-weapons at your leisure. Hey Coronet, when you get to hell, tell him that Gen 1 is the best. After the craziness of Stage 4, Stage 5 is a lot more relaxed. Try killing these harpies before they can drop their gremlin monsters. Beware of the knife in this candle. Dracula's observed that the Belmont family has cut down countless monsters using a whip. That's when the inspiration for this whip skeleton struck. Use the same method to defeat this Whip Skeleton that you've been using for every other enemy in the game. Defeating the Whip Skeleton grants you access to Dracula's castle. Simon has finally arrived in the Demon Castle, but more trials await. Keep practicing the strategies from this video, and don't give up. The more you play Super Castlevania 4, the better you'll get. Lead Simon to the throne room, and banish Dracula forever. If you liked this video, then make like a zombie light victim and keep it to yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.